Hey all, hope you're all doing well out there. Before we go into today's story, I want to let everyone know about something I recently learned about. Apparently YouTube didn't like one of my stories I did last year and for whatever reason, they deleted it. It was a story about a young man in Missouri who had came up missing and they had found him hanging in a tree quite some time later. Because of this, they deleted it and gave me a strike. I tried to appeal it and they again upheld it. Whatever, because of this, and because they continue to tighten their restrictions and control over people's video content, I want to let everyone know that all of my videos are also on the YouTube competitor, Rumble. Just head over there and search for the Graveyard Dance channel or if you look in my social links in the description box below, there's a direct link to my channel where you can see all my videos. Now, on to today's video. Nicholas Samuel Markowitz or just Nick as he was affectionately called by everyone who knew him was born on September 19th of 1984. He was the son of Susan and Jeff Markowitz who lived in the affluent area of West Hills and had three kids. They had a daughter and son together and was also raising the oldest son who had came from Jeff's previous wife. They were your basic all-American happy California family for the most part. Jeff's family had a company that produced airplane aviational parts and Susan was a stay-at-home mom who loved and doted on her children. Although the family was a happy one, Jeff's eldest son, Ben was starting to become somewhat of a problem child as he grew older and began to always find himself in the middle of scrapes with the law or on the wrong side of whatever type of trouble or drama he could find himself in the middle of. Apparently, a lot of it centered around recreational drug use. Although his stepmother Susan loved Ben and always tried to do the best she could to help take care of him, but both her and her husband Jeff started to worry that Ben was becoming an unhealthy influence on their two younger children, their 15-year-old son Nick in particular. Nick was an extremely good-hearted kid who loved playing ball with his friends and was known to be a very happy-go-lucky, trusting kid who loved nothing more than making his friends and loved ones laugh and smile. He was the type of kid who wouldn't hurt anyone. But unbeknownst to him, there was trouble coming because of an unpaid drug debt of his older brother Ben. Unfortunately, it would end up costing young Nick his life. Ben grew up going to a great school and had a great start in life. One of his childhood friends who lived just down the road did as well. A young man by the name of Jesse James Hollywood and yep, that's actually his real name. Jesse, just like Ben was a great kid growing up who showed a lot of potential early in life. He was a good athlete, and he attended El Camino Real High School with his friend Ben. As kids growing up, Jesse's dad Jack Hollywood was a boys little league coach and it was like one big happy family, for a while that is. As the boys got older, both began to experiment with drugs and alcohol and both boys started to go down the wrong paths in life. By the 10th grade, Jesse had gotten expelled from the school they both attended and had to go to another nearby school to graduate. Although he did end up getting his diploma, his final career choice probably wasn't the best idea. Many claim that his father was a drug dealer and gangster, and following in his dad's footsteps, it said that he too became a marijuana dealer which back then was illegal and it was much harder to get than it is today. This was back in the late 90s. By the time he was 19 years old, Jesse had a home that was bought and paid for from the sale of marijuana. He had several friends he would sell to as well. At first, they were all friends, but as some of their debts racked up, young Jesse became really aggressive and mean about getting what was owed to him. If his friends couldn't pay, they were forced to either sell his drugs or work for Jesse doing whatever he needed done. His demeanor was becoming more meaner and darker. One of the boys who owed him money was his friend Ben Markowitz. The difference between Ben and all his other friends was, Ben wasn't afraid of Jesse. Ben was one of the few if only people who stood his ground against Jesse Hollywood. It absolutely infuriated Jesse. Jesse was only 5 foot 4 inches tall and probably had little man syndrome and wanted to make an example out of Ben, but the problem was, Ben was much larger and not afraid. So, one day, Jesse got a few of his friends together and set off in their van to go looking for Ben who owed a debt of just 1200 bucks. On their way to find Ben, they came across his little brother Nick who was walking home and without thinking about it, they all jumped out and grabbed Nick and drug him into the van and sped off. 
Before being thrown in the van though, they took turns beating and kicking poor Nick. He had no idea what was going on or why he was being attacked. He was just a kid who had nothing to do with his brother's business. Not only had Ben refused to pay his debt to Jesse, the final straw came when he apparently knocked out one of Jesse's home windows. Now, it was his little brother who was going to pay the price. His parents Jeff and Susan had no idea Nick had been abducted. For the first few hours, they thought Nick might be at a friend's house. But then they started to worry. Susan had given Nick a pager. This was the days before smartphones. Many didn't even have cell phones yet. A pager was a device that his mother could call and when it would beep, Nick was instructed to find a phone right away and call home. The problem was, he couldn't call because he was being held hostage in the back of a van on the way to Santa Barbara which was about 70 miles away. They began to force drugs and alcohol on him to make him easier to control as time went on. When they got to Santa Barbara, his captors which consisted of Jesse James Hollywood and his friends Jesse Rugga and William Skidmore all met up with their friends Graham Presley, Natasha Adams Young, and Kelly Carpenter where they took Nick to various house parties trying to figure out what to do with him. All the while they had tried to calm Nick down saying that he was eventually going to be let go. Sadly, that would never happen. Nick being just a teenage boy trusted these people to keep their word so he began to relax and even started to settle down and befriend some of his captors. Many of the people at the parties they went to didn't even know that Ben was abducted or that he was in any danger at all. While partying at a place called the Lemon Tree Inn, Jesse told Jesse Rugga that they were all going to go home, but whether it was Rugga or someone else advised against it. Hollywood was warned against the punishment he would get for kidnapping so he called his attorney and asked him what would happen if he was caught doing such a thing and he was told he could possibly get a life sentence for it. This terrified Jesse and now, this was no longer fun and games. He was at a loss for what to do. Hollywood finally made his decision and called Ryan Hoyt, another member of his gang who owed him money. Jesse Hollywood gave Hoyt a Tech-9 semi-automatic handgun and directed him to kill 15-year-old Nick as a way of paying off his debt. Before we go on, let's all stop and think about this for a moment, okay? This Jesse James Hollywood kid had graduated from high school. He had bought and paid for a home by the age of 19 and had more money and material things than most people would have after working all their lives. To get to this point in life, you think it would require just a tad bit of common sense, right? Yet this brainiac took a 15-year-old teenage boy around to not just one, but several house parties where he was seen by hundreds of people and many knew of the situation and yet he decides to murder him. Really? Did he honestly think even for a remote second he would ever get away with it? Life lesson here folks, think before you do something stupid. I don't know which was dumber him for deciding it or so many of his friends going along with it. Either way, they weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. The decision was made. Jesse sent Graham Presley out to the Lizard's Mouth Trail in the Santa Ynez Mountains north of Goleta, California to dig a grave for Nick. Nick still had no clue what was coming. He still thought he was going home. Some of his captors had even offered to let him go. During all this, Nick just thought it was an adventure. During the time, he had even met and became somewhat friendly with another 17-year-old girl. He had been relaxing somewhat and even playing video games and had thought he even made new friends with the crew who was about to kill him. He was even heard at one point saying that this was an adventure that someday he would tell his grandchildren about. He didn't know how wrong he was. Still oblivious to the danger he was in, after the party, Hoy, Raga, and Presley drove Nicholas to the mountains and walked up a trail to a grave dug by Presley earlier that night. Rugga bound Nicholas's hands behind his back and covered his mouth with duct tape. By this point, he had to know. Can you imagine the terror this poor kid must have been feeling? Ryan Hoyt then hit Nick in the back of the head with a shovel, knocking him into the grave, and shot him nine times with Jesse Hollywood's handgun. They shoveled some dirt over him and left him out there and all returned home. Did I mention they weren't very intelligent? If not, I can't stress that enough because they made two more blundering mistakes. One, they dug a very shallow grave which didn't hide the smell of a decomposing body. Two, 
They also dug a grave right along a very popular walking trail where the body would be found just three days later by some hikers on the trail. This story is so bizarre that if it was a movie, you wouldn't believe it, except they actually did turn it into a movie which starred Justin Timberlake, Sharon Stone, Amanda Seyfried among others as well as Anton Yelchin who played the main role, but they changed the name from Nick to Zack in the movie. The movie was called Alpha Dog and was released in 2006. It was a very accurate story for the most part of what happened, so if you get a chance, I highly recommend it. Jesse James Hollywood was 20 at the time of the murder. Although he was not present at the scene of the crime, he was found to have ordered the murder. After Nick was killed, Hollywood went on the run. He was arrested in Sequerima, Brazil after being on the FBI's most wanted list for 5 years. In 2009, he was convicted of kidnapping and first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Ryan Hoyt who was 20 at the time, was charged with the first degree murder. He was convicted on November 21, 2001 and sentenced to death on December 9 that same year. Jesse Ruggo, was 20 at the time of the murder, was charged with aiding in the kidnap and murder of Nicholas Markowitz. He was convicted in 2002 of aggravated kidnapping for ransom or extortion with special circumstances, but was acquitted on the murder charge. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 7 years. Parole was denied in 2006. After serving 11 years in prison Ruggo was granted parole, and released from prison on October 24th of 2013. William Skidmore, was 20 at the time of the murder was charged with kidnapping and robbery. In September 2002, he was sentenced to 9 years in a state prison as part of a plea bargain. Skidmore was released in April 2009. Graham Presley who was 17 at the time of the murder, dug Markowitz's grave. He was tried twice. In July 2002, he was acquitted of kidnapping, the jury hung on the murder charge. In October 2002, he was retried on the murder charge and was convicted of second-degree murder. Presley was held at a California Youth Authority facility until shortly before his 25th birthday in 2007. He has since been released. The Markowitz family, in 2013, they won an $11.2 million civil lawsuit against the kidnappers and the murderers. Still though, that's nothing when you think about the loss of a child. Nick's parents were not happy when they found out a movie was being made about the death of their son. I can't say I blame them. Can you imagine how hard it would be to see the reenactment of his death? It took such a toll on Susan that according to her husband Jeff, she attempted to take her own life. Disclaimer here, we do not suggest or condone it. We have to throw that in there so YouTube stays happy and doesn't delete another video. Thankfully though, she survived and made it through but sadly, Nick's father passed away on July 20, 2018. He was 64 years old. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Susan and Jeff's two remaining children. Although it's never easy to get over the death of a loved one, we hope they eventually find some kind of peace and solace knowing that father and son are together again in the afterlife. I think Jeff and Nick would have wanted that. We hope you liked today's story. If you did, You'd be helping us out so much by subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell notification for all future videos. Whether you find us on YouTube or Rumble, we appreciate the views. Our social media links are in the description box below at each place where you can follow us. Please feel free to share our videos on social media and to tell your friends. You can even pick up merch in the description box below. Till next time, thanks again.